Bill, why do you think cloud computing will drive evolution in the data center? Well, let's step back and um, ask ourselves what cloud is and, um, and why it's having an impact. And the, I think the, the first thing to say is that in many cases, cloud is just um, a renaming of things that we've been doing for a long time. It's, it's become a bit of a bandwagon. But um, let's start by looking at some of the, the cloud services that have, that have changed the way uh, developers work, which well, is... The, what are some of those things that it changed the name of? Well, yeah, I mean, we, we call um, hosting services um, infrastructure as a story, uh, infrastructure as a service. Exactly. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's really, it's the same old stuff. But what's, what's changing is, um, you know, let's look at what um, companies like Akamai and, and Amazon have, um, have done to the market, which is to make storage and server capacity available um, online over the internet for, um, you can rent it for, a, for an hour or a day, you can buy it with your credit card, and uh, you can have it now. And that's um, not the way data centers have traditionally been, um, been organized. If you want a new server or you want some storage, you'll be lucky to get it in, you know, in a month or three months' time, depending on the type of organization you're in. So it's not surprising that in many organizations, developers have said, hey, well, let's use a bit of this, uh, um, this uh, infrastructure as a service and, and start to, to put up um, new capabilities. Now, once the developers have done it, then you know, you'll find some lines of business are saying, well, we don't need to use IT at all. You know, we'll, we'll put up our app uh, on, um, on Amazon. Uh, and you know, suddenly the IT security guys are, are having a nightmare because uh, you know, nobody's asked them to do a, a security review of, of how this app is, um, is going to be bombarded with viruses and, uh, and other malware out there in, out there in the, real, uh, the real world of the Internet. So those are the kind of things that, that are actually happening in, in real organizations. And what it means is that, that the CIO has got to say, um, you know, I've got to, to change the way my data center works. I've got to put in, um, if you like, self-service and automation into the facilities that, that I offer to my internal users. And that's the whole concept of, of creating the internal cloud. Uh, and that uh, you know, is obviously and putting new requirements onto, the, onto data center architectures. But also, you know, we were talking about you know, hosting services, you know, traditional uh, telcos and, uh, and IBM and all the other operators of hosting facilities are changing the way their services are organized as well to embrace the cloud model of, of more dynamic services, more shared services, uh, and, and more automation and self-service. And so we've actually got, we've now got a three-tier architecture of, of private clouds within um, an IT department, hosted clouds within um, the hosting operators, and then the, the public cloud of services available over the internet. And you know, the, the challenge is, how do you uh, address those three worlds in terms of offering you know, secure facilities depending upon you know, the nature of the application and the nature of the data? So it's putting whole new challenges to particularly IT security departments in terms of um, the tools that they're using, the, um, the policies that they're setting, and, and how they police this new world. Okay, so what impact do you see this having in the financial sector? It, it has a couple of uh, impacts. Part of it is, and I'm picking up on something you just said, Phil, about internal cloud computing and changing the mindset of how we structure data center. The idea and having the ability to build or a small area, for lack of a better term, a sandbox, if you will, to use an old term, where people can come and draw down on computing resources rapidly and easily or form a small production system in, almost in real time to try out the next new product is a very, very good idea. The other thing that it really gives us some freedom to do when you go to the external type of cloud is to move out to there that stuff which is not core to who you are and what you're doing as a business. If it's interesting computing that I have to do because it's, it has to be there, but it's not going to gain me market share in whatever my uh, market is that I'm competing in, then maybe I put it out there. It's a lower cost, quicker alternative. Uh, I don't make significant investments, and it just sits off to the side. And then comes the challenge with the security folks balancing the risks and rewards of that. And uh, the real gain is the time to market. The downside is, do I have a security pro uh, profile issue? 
that I have to uh, watch out for. With cloud, it's kind of interesting. I, I see so many different reactions from the customers that we work with. So, in, like in one sec, in one of our segments, the service provider segment, there's a lot of eagerness because they see this as a great opportunity to deliver more services and really, you know, build upon a business that they've already, a business practice they already have had for a while. In the enterprise segment, I see a variety of reactions because, you know, some customers they they they're actually apprehensive, right? And then some are saying, I, all right, I, I think this is something that I, I need to be doing or paying attention to, and, but I just don't know where to begin, and some that are actually kind of aggressive about it. And, you know, for, you know, when you look at cloud, you're probably already, as an enterprise, using a cloud service, right? You, your salespeople might be using something like salesforce.com, or you might be using an on-demand service from Oracle. You, uh, you probably have a company performing your payroll services. But you know, depending on the kinds of things that you've, you've been getting as a service delivered to your business over the internet, the level of frequency with which you use that might actually be very different. You know, if you're using payroll services, well, you're, you're sending out data a couple times a month or once a month, uh, the employee base, the, the hundreds or thousands of people that work there, might actually go to that payroll service twice a year. You know, once in the beginning of the year to make sure that you know, everything's all right, and once at the end of the year to get you know, the information for filing their taxes. Um, Salesforce, the frequency is higher, right? Because they're using it day in and day out. And de as they look at uh, what, you know, as IT people look at this, you know, depending on where they are with using these services, that's, that kind of gauges where their reaction is. And, you know, it's, Im it's important to realize that, as f I I've heard you talk about this, Phil, this whole notion of virtual, having a virtual private cloud, where some of these things may be hosted outside, some of these things may be a private cloud inside, and that you have to think of this as, a, as your entire pool of resources. And it, what it does is it brings a new economy to the enterprise data center, because now that you can actually design your data center uh, not around peak capacity, so things don't sit there idle and, and are unused, uh, you're not wasting any money. You can actually design more for mean capacity, maybe use some of these public services to deal with, uh, with the peak periods and provide you the elasticity, but do it in a way that gives you economy. And it doesn't change things in IT in terms of planning the business process and architecting the IT services and the ownership of, and responsibility of the security and the compliance, reporting and monitoring all of this. Um, and those are all still very vital aspects of the IT processes when you look at that virtual private cloud. And the best place to start is to look at your own data center and how would you make that cloud-like? Um, and we just have a very simple prescription for that. It's, you know, it's three steps. You need to simplify what you have. You have to find a way to share it because everything about cloud is by definition shared. And you have to way, find a way to ensure security and compliance. And what New York Stock Exchange has done is actually taken the first step, right? They've simplified their infrastructure. They're actually using uh, routing technology to be able to share things between two different data centers. And so, you know, people are doing this in real time today.